Hey guys, it's Matho here once again, and with the expansion and new Essence League coming right up, I'm going to give you a list of uh, probably five builds that I think are good to start this league out with, that don't necessarily take much currency or gear to get going, and should cover almost everything you need to be able to do in the end game, but they're not necessarily the strongest builds, as they aren't the most expensive builds, and they don't use the best and most expensive gear. So in any case, um, to start us off with, I'm going to go with Voltaxic. And that is the Voltaxic Deadeye that I have played many times, or several times before I suppose, um, based off of the Voltaxic Bow. As you can see, it is now 60% damage converted into Chaos, whereas it used to be 100%, but that doesn't really matter. It's still a very strong and rather cheap item, as they were going for as low as 1 Chaos um, all of last league. And we're utilizing here Deadeye. Now what we're going to be doing here is going with Ricochet and Endless Munitions. You may be worried that we don't have a single target anymore since Frostwall won't work, but that isn't at all a problem. You may remember that before Frostwall Pierce, Lightning Arrow was a thing, we did have Blast Rain. And Blast Rain was my go-to uh, single target for the Voltaxic build, and it performed very well and gave me some of my first... Uh, very solid uber kills with the Voltaxic build. Um, Blast Rain is still very strong and nothing's really changed there. The only thing that's been nerfed since uh, Blast Rain was insane back in the day is the Chaos conversion of the Voltaxic itself. So you don't stack poison quite as well as you used to, but that's not too much of an issue because you don't necessarily have to utilize poison in this build anymore. And the strength of Blast Rain is still the very strong single target while also using King of the Hill and pushing an enemy away so that you become pretty safe overall. So the build itself in total is rather cheap, rather safe, and should be able to take on every boss out there. And since we're no longer Pierce, we will be using Ricochet, which is plus one chain, basically for free. So that means that with Lightning Arrow, paired with your plus one free chain, we have incredibly insane uh, AoE damage, and it scales very um, healthily indeed when attacking many monsters and large packs of monsters. So I just showed you there had a 4-link Lightning Arrow and probably, I think, a 5-link Blast Rain. Now, the main links you're going to need for your Lightning Arrow are going to be Lightning Arrow, GMP, and Wed. They're your staple three. Beyond that, you go with Added Lightning. That's your fourth. Your fifth is going to be Crit Strikes. Because Voltaxic itself only has six crit, your crit's going to be somewhat low without a Crit Strikes gem at around 40%. Now, with power charges, you go up to about 50, but that's still not quite as reliable as we'd like it, because you're not really doing much damage without crits, so you may as well run crit strikes as your next gem. You'll be at about 70, 75 with power charges, and you get power charges through a curse on hit, herald of thunder, and assassin's mark setup. That's for single target most of the time, or just heavy stuff like um, at Ziri runs. Otherwise, you'll run... Um, Herald of Ice instead, I don't have it linked here, and that will still shatter for you and give you your power charges throughout maps. Or you can run Herald of Thunder all the time if you really want, doesn't particularly matter. Your aura of choice is Wrath, and that scales all of your damage, um, of course, for Lightning. So that's your 5 link there, in my opinion. Your 6 link is probably going to be slow Proj, because it still gives you 29% more Proj damage, and slower projectiles doesn't really matter. So in the end there, you have the four extra arrows from GMP, a fifth one from Endless Munitions, and you'll, all of them will chain. So it's a very strong AoE, and um, we save a few points by no longer needing to go over here for piercing shots, and a link from Pierce, so good things there. Um, AoE is not a problem, and single target shouldn't really be a problem, because Blast Rain is very strong, and the links are as follows. Blast Rain, Conk Effect. Wed and Added Lightning. Those are your staple four, once again. Then you go with Crit Strikes, and your sixth link is probably faster attacks, just for that feel-good playstyle of very fast hitting and running. But you can also go with Slow Proj, you can also go with Increased Crit Damage. In general, the character's pretty cheap to build. All you really need is a Voltaxic, and then it's very flexible gearing everywhere else. I choose to run a Rat's Nest. You don't have to, though. You can run some Face Breakers, or some Rare Gloves, or some Snake Bites, but bear in mind you'll have to run a Frenzy single target to keep it up pretty much all of the time. 
Um, besides that, just try and get as much crit multi as you can everywhere. I currently don't have any on this amulet. Uh, Wed is also very strong, but added lightning damage does do good stuff too. The reason Wed is very strong is because Voltaxic itself has 300 damage, your Wrath has 300 damage, your added lightning has 300 damage, so a bit of extra lightning damage isn't quite as strong as, say, 40 extra elemental damage with your weapons. And then, of course, try and run a Diamond Flask and a Ziri Flask for extra leech and you still have some leech over here. This over here is going to be your mana leech node, and to level up, you will probably be just trying to focusing, trying to focus on pure projectile damage, and eventually get into bow crit. So focus on um, projectile damage to start with, because you won't really be critting or even trying to crit for quite a while. So grab those, these, go down here and get the duelist cluster, fill out some life regen, probably the leech, and then you start to grab the crit and other such things like this crit over here, this crit over here, and the shadow tree. Um, the reason you do that last is because you probably won't get much crit until later, and initially you're probably going to be running a storm cloud, maybe a death's harp, whatever you can get your hands on until you can get a voltaxic, and those should be fine and they should carry you through. Uh, bandits will be life, attack speed, and frenzy charge, most likely, but you can go with power charge if you feel like you can sustain your power charges well enough. And lastly, the chest slot. I went with the belly of the beast last time because with that you can hit up to 6k life if you get your... Um, gear adjusted and passives adjusted accordingly and i felt that was fine because we still had a decent amount of evasion up to about 30 percent whereas an evasion chest would take you to say 40 percent but would leave you with less life total and as well as that um, i have two static electricities they give you quite a bit of lightning damage one to 80 here and one to 80 there as well but it's a bit less if you don't take acuity which i only took at the absolute highest of levels we're talking 92 plus so otherwise you're looking at jewels like this guy here projectile damage lightning damage crit strike multi with lightning skills that sort of thing and that is the voltaxic build next up is everybody's favorite uh, blade vortex pathfinder this should be a very popular build in the next in the coming um league and expansion and um, that's because Pathfinder still is very strong, so are Flasks, and Blade Vortex got somewhat of a change. So instead of going up to 50 stacks maximum, only goes up to 20, but it gained like 60% damage. So for mapping, in general, you would never go up past like 10 to 15 stacks anyway, so all it should do is increase your mapping clear speed, because you're still going to hit that stack amount. Um, as you normally would, only you now hit a lot harder. It just means you won't be able to like one-shot bosses quite as well as you did before, but I think with 20 stacks and 60% increased damage, it should still steamroll bosses quite well when you're well enough geared. And this is roughly what my passive tree would look like. I'll come back to that in a second, because I may have a little demo for you. Um, this is just a character I've put together from a previous Flask um, Pathfinder-based character, the nodes are probably still very much up to you, and I'm not sure what I'd do or what you should do. It depends on how you build the character, but if you use a Vinktars, for example, you probably want Master Alchemist. If you're not up to a Vinktars, you probably don't need it. You may want some poison instead. You may want Veteran Bower just for extra fizz damage and uh, flask regen. But Master Surgeon is pretty much what you're going to go with so that you can actually top up all these flasks without um, really worrying too much, though with 20 stacks it may be a bit harder. In general, the reason you go Pathfinder is so that you can get those extra stacks on your super OP flasks back up instantly. Something like a granite flask will give you insane amounts of armor just from um, one use. A Rumi's, for example, can give you up to like 60 block just from its own use. Uh, Vinktars will give you a lot of leech and shock everything around you, which is huge. A Quicksilver flask gives you insane movement speed so a good quicksilver like this gives you a hundred percent movement speed and at siri flask a lot of extra 
bit, um, Chaos Damage and Leech. All of these things make f uh, Pathfinder for Blade Vortex very tempting and very strong. This character isn't um, really well put together or anything at this stage, but you get the idea. This is basically what your playstyle is going to be. Some fast running and uh, just, you know, pew pewing straight through everything. And as you all know, Blade Vortex is still very strong. Going to be probably um, a better clear type character in the next um, league and expansion. And the more currency you put into it, the better it's going to be. But initially, it should just be a very strong character to start with, as it's uh, very strong on flasks and gets better with more currencies you put in and should be able to tackle all of the content that the game has to throw at you including the new bosses because it's a safe bet that Blade Vortex will be able to do that. Um, the life based version may be not as much depending on what the content is but the CI and eventually low life based Pathfinder Blade Vortexes should be able to do that very comfortably. You can also build an assassin if you want but this is um, just what everyone seems to be gravitating towards these days. Pathfinder, because flasks are so OP and you can build around them. Let's get out of here real quick. Um, anything else I need to mention? So on the passive tree, this is there's several different ways of building it, I'm pretty sure. This is the one I came up with. And you're going to start out as a ranger because you have to. Um, try and get most of the flask nodes, so you got these here, these here, these will help um, make your flask cost less, and these will make your flasks more effective. So in total, with the Pathfinder nodes, you have something like 50% flask effect, and it makes all your flasks very strong indeed. Uh, you try and roll surgeons on some things like, let's say, the Quicksilver, but it's not terribly important as surgeons from this Master Surgeon will probably do most of the work anyway, as well as Nature's Boon and reducing all of your flask um, charges spent from this, as well as belt mods. Uh, you'll probably only need exceptional performance and not even increase duration gem anymore for... Um, this to work because you're only going up to 20 stacks now. Besides that, you're definitely going to be grabbing Valpact, and your leech will come from either a leech gem or Warlord's Mark, or also um, at Ceres Flask and Vinktars if you get up to that stage. It's very similar to the Assassin um, build I've released for you guys before, except it's a Pathfinder version, so it's built slightly differently, but the concept is relatively the same. Uh, you'll grab the AoE nodes over here, and I couldn't really justify going to the Templar tree when setting it up like this and going down here. Ends up being a pretty tanky character. You can run a shield if you want. Um, I was thinking if you run a shield, you could probably then use shield charge and fortify as your travel to also keep up fortify, and that should be pretty good too. Uh, Carcass Jack's always good. Divinarises are good starters. This is more like what you're looking for in the end. Some good um, spell damage, crit, and multi as well. In general, you guys know what Blade Vortex is, and you can check my previous videos for it. This is just the Pathfinder special. For links, you'll probably want to refer to my previous Blade Vortex videos, although you don't, I don't think, need increased duration anymore, and maybe not even spell echo, so we'll have to play around with a few things. But in general, uh, you're looking at Blade Vortex, Increased Area and Controlled Destruction, those are your staples, I would think. And then you got your Added Fire, uh, we might need spell echo, maybe Crit Strikes, maybe Crit Multi, not quite sure on those just yet. A very strong character, and probably what a lot of people are going to be playing. Next up is a Shockwave Totem Inquisitor. Now it's a crit based Shockwave Totem in, um, Templar and I don't haven't actually made one of these before but in concept and in theory this is what the character is supposed to look like. I kind of just pieced together whatever I could so uh, the gear is actually not finalized or what it's supposed to be but the concept is what I'm here to show you. Um, you have a Shockwave Totem, Added Fire, Fizz to Lightning and Increased Area as your four link. So that, paired with Carcass Jack, all the AoE, a couple of Divinarius's, although Divinarius is just a starting weapon, 
gives you quite a lot of AoE to start with, as you can see. We're using Orb of Storms attached to Power Charge on Crit to sustain power charges, which as you can see is pretty easy. And then with the current setup I have something like exactly 55 crit, but you can get a lot higher and we will probably use a Crit Strikes gem as a fifth link, because without crits you're not really dealing too much damage, so generally you're going to want to do that. Um, this is what it currently looks like, this is basically what the playstyle will be, you'll grab some life flasks and some whatever else. Uh, mana is mostly sustained through clarity, as well as rallying cry if you need it, and potentially a couple of mana nodes on the tree. I'll show you the tree in a second. Essentially, you're trying to get some level of uh, elemental damage on your shockwave totem, which hits very hard, so then you're going to be shocking things, freezing things, uh, burning, but that's not terribly important. The thing is, you're going to be penetrating with all of those damage types, and it should scale well into the end game. Once you're ready for some single target damage, you change your shockwave totems, increased area gem into a conch effect gem, and that rapidly increases the damage. As far as uh, your fifth and sixth link, I'm not quite sure. I think it's probably faster casting and crit strikes, but there may be some other things you play around with. I uh, haven't ever actually made one of these before, so it is basically just a concept from me anyway. I'm sure if you look hard enough you could probably find a guide or two on something like this if you'd rather follow something um, tried and tested, but I'll show you what I had in mind anyway. Your tree will look something like this and you'll be life based with a little bit of mana regen from nodes like this. Uh, we probably don't need Oh, wait, we do still need that. Um, and when you, if you feel like you do need more mana, you'll grab uh, these two points here, because Shockwave Totem is very heavy on the mana, but you can solve that by running a Mana Flask, uh, as well as Clarity and Rallying Cry. In any case, uh, you'll probably start out, just as a Templar, as always, with any spell you want, really, or just Flame Totem, and then get um, Ancestral Bond as soon as you want, and level with Flame Totem and you can swap into Shockwave Totem at 28, but it's not really recommended until you have probably this area cluster and that area cluster, and then you can also get the area gem. So that's roughly around level 38 to 45-ish, depending on um, when you can get all these uh, good clusters as well as the gem itself, and start doing some good damage without crit, because you probably won't be crit for a little while, since most of your crit's over here and here. Um, leveling should be fairly smooth, and I do think it's going to be a decent enough build to take you pretty much everywhere. It's going to be as expensive as you possibly want to make it, because uh, you can end up swapping into dual void batteries, that's your end game, and void batteries pretty much double your damage compared to two daggers, for example. I'm not really going to be telling you all the specific gear everywhere, but you can get the idea, you know, face breakers give you some good crit multi if you want to use those. These are fucking legacy, so they have terrible crit multi. Um, a carcass jack, really good AoE, and divinaris is just start you out. Otherwise, try and get life pretty much everywhere. Some mana regen on some, some of your jewelry would help too, some crit multi on your neck, some cast speed on your neck is good as well. And, uh, yeah, whatever else you want, wherever else you want. Um, I think it should be a solid build, but, yeah, up to you guys if you want to play totems. Next up is another totem build, which I feel will probably be rather flavor of the month. Although it was already fairly popular and flavor of the month last league, um, Ancestral Warchief totems. They haven't really been nerfed or touched in the coming patch or expansion, and they should be very strong and favorable as a starter build for uh, just about everyone, and they can be built many different ways. The way I've built it here is a Herophant, uh, triple totems, and the one I most recommend to do is a Facebreaker version, but you can do um, Axe, Sword, Crit Starves, just about everything. And there's quite a few different ways of going about building it, but the playstyle ends up rather the same for all of them. That is just drop a few totems, watch them go ham, and run around in circles. 
or you can also interpret or incorporate a extra skill of your own to do damage while that's happening if you don't take ancestral bond which in this build i did not because i don't think you need four totems for this build to function well enough but normally you're only going to need one totem to do the killing and you got your other two standby ready to be used mostly for single target or standing off to the side killing things that are just running up behind you for ancestral warchief totems i've made three different variants that you can pick from and i think the facebreaker one's probably going to be the strongest with the least amount of gear but if you can't get an abyssus then it might be um, a bit hard to get going at the early leagues part of the stage so the tree looks something like this you start off as a templar and you grab the area you grab some totem nodes and a bunch of life fizz damage and all that all over the tree end up getting pretty high amounts of life 187 and the hierophant side of the tree should look something like this going up to ritual of awakening so you get two extra totems meaning you have a total of three totems and since you don't have ancestral bond you can still do damage yourself with something like shield charge for example um, as well as that you then grab divine guardians uh, guidance and sanctuary of thought so that just makes mana a lot easier not that that's really a problem but you don't have much else that you can do here uh, you can grab Illuminated Devotion, which gives you 20% increased area in your gloves as a sort of pseudo 5 link uh, early on if, before you get an actual 5 link. So that's what the Facebreaker kind of looks like there. Of course, you're going to run an Abyssus in this sort of build. You hit about 6k life in the end, and you should be fairly tanky as long as you're not standing around taking damage too much, and you shouldn't be since you've got three totems doing the beating for you. Uh, the axe build looks something like this and i'll link that as well and the doom sower which is um sword build looks something like this so the idea behind that one is to use a doom sower you get some extra perks by um socketing your shit inside that and you can use sweep and lacerate yourself as well as a sort of bonus whereas with axes your starting weapon would probably be a combs primacy but Chances are we'll be able to craft some pretty good swords and axes in this um, Essence League as well anyway for the purposes of huge deeps. But um, I'd say starting off face breakers is probably the easiest one out of those. And of course face breakers, you're going for as big a roll as you possibly can there. Um, your fizz rolls as much as you can. So flat fizz on your jewelry, flat fizz on your necklace as well. Um, on your mega nords if you can afford to get a great old ones ward it's a lot of extra damage and of course abyssus and lastly um i'll recommend i think the shield charge facebreaker character which i think is still a very strong character and nothing's really changed there uh, we do have some end game iron rings that we can now apply to the build otherwise it's still just as strong as it used to be slayer little nerfs shouldn't really do anything they're very minor and the only real issue with the facebreaker shield charge build here is you do need an abyssus and if they're in demand um, they may be a rather costly at the start of a league and leveling the character isn't terribly easy until you get some facebreakers so I do still recommend it. I think it will be a very good um, league build, but um, there's not much else to say here. It's you guys know what it is. Uh, you've seen it plenty of times, and the guide for it is right here as well. All of that still applies. Nothing really changes. One thing I will mention, though, however, since uh, playing that build. For the Slayer nodes, you're going to be going Headsman and then up to Brutal Fervor. Since playing that build, I've uh, then played around with Brutal Fervor and tested it, and it is absolutely amazing for the leech and the survivability it gives. So forget impact, you, it's not worth having 15% extra radius uh, over having Brutal Fervor. So shield charge uh, still will be very fast clear speed it might uh, drop off if the life of mobs gets too high in the you know new atlas of worlds maps and all that but uh, the totem itself should help you carry with single target and should still be very good i i think it's a 
strong bird still and um, one I would recommend. With that said though, um, the previous starter build for New League Prophecy version video I made should pretty much still apply almost entirely. Of course, you know that Elemental Conflux was somewhat nerfed, but I think it'll still be pretty decent um, to play a Elementalist, say, with Flame Blast or Firestorm, uh, maybe even Incinerate if you really want to. And we may just have to use a chance to ignite gem or something like that if uh, the conflux by itself doesn't work out but four out of every 10 seconds you will still have ignite and besides that you not, don't always need ignite anyway so i think um for this uh video most of these builds still apply assassin blade vortex still works elementalist flame blast or firestorm should still be all right and i'm pretty sure earthquake is going to be just as good as it always was uh, Lacerate, not the greatest starter, but it is still a good skill, so I wouldn't really recommend starting with that one. And Elementalist of Vortex or Frostbolt, that one might be a bit tougher as well these days because of the Elementalist changes. That's about all I'll um, go over for today's starter build video. I hope you guys pick something that you enjoy playing, uh, not necessarily just what you think is going to be the strongest. I'm most likely going to go with Voltaxic myself because I think that gives me the greatest chance of killing everything that I don't know is coming up just yet. That's all from me. Uh, see you guys in the Essence League. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.